Humans are really changing the way this planet works. One of the new frontiers is looking at seabed mining. Today we're going to talk about what is seabed mining and what's the consequences for the planet. There's a gold rush on in the bottom of the seafloor right now. We're going to talk a little bit about the different types of seabed mining that we have. So right now there's three main ones that we're looking at. The first one is um, looking at sea mounts, what's actually happening in these underwater mountains. The second one is the vents, and that's actually hot water coming out of the seafloor. And the third one is the abyssal plains, where we have some nodules. So looking at the different ones, the sea mounts basically accumulate a number of uh, minerals on top in the crust. And that's what we would be trying to mine. They're also quite diverse systems. And here we have a number of quite interesting type of things like cold water corals, sponges, spider crabs, and a lot of different types of mollusks. And some of these categories would have as much as 80% endemism. The second thing that we're looking at is the hydrothermal vents. So these ones are interesting in that it's very hot water that's coming up from the magma and creates uh, these chimneys that are quite rich in minerals and can contain quite a lot of things that we're interested in. Again, there's some very specialized ecosystems some of the most strange things that we know on the planet are actually found down there, including the Gentai crab, for example. And finally, uh, we have the Great Abyssal Plain. And some of these plains are covered in manganese modules. So these nodules can be the size of tennis balls, which is quite significant, and they can be on quite large areas. Again, it's a matter of finding these and then tucking them up of the system. This is a system which is vast and in fact is full of all kinds of organisms, including anglerfish and lots of different types of uh, sea-based living things. Now, why would we be mining these things? Well, there is the polymetallic nodules, uh, the ones that we talked about last, and they in fact can contain things like iron, nickel, copper, and so on. There's the polymetallic crust, which can have uh, even more uh, valuable things like copper, but certainly some of the other things as well. And finally, you have the um, <coughs> vents, which do have uh, things like gold and silver in them, but in relatively small quantities. So, why do we need these minerals right now? Manganese is used uh, particularly in conjunction with aluminium, and it's a very useful and uh, commonly used uh, type of mineral. Uh, copper is something that we use in all kinds of things, including electronics. Nickel is often used to reinforce and make steel uh, not rust. And finally, cobalt is used particularly in batteries these days. So, where are the potential uh, impacts? Well, there's a lot of development right now with new types of technologies of how can we actually suck up things. Particularly, the manganese nodules are being decided. But of course, this will have a number of significant environmental impacts, particularly the big plumes that will happen in the ocean floor. Uh, there will also be uh, lots of noises that will be happening and potentially a number of other things also. I think if you look at the impacts from the crust, they'd be very significant. You would basically strip mine and destroy whatever is there. And as I said, a lot of these systems have as much as 80% endemism, which means they're unique to that one place. And finally, I think looking at the hydrothermal vents, they are very sensitive uh, systems, very unique. Even if they're dormant, they can come up on and off, which means uh, we should really be careful in terms of what we're doing there. So what's the future of seabed mining? Well, quite clearly, we need a lot more understanding of the biodiversity and the impacts on the biodiversity. And a lot of the impact studies are pretty uh, weak right now, so there's really more work needed on that. Also, we need to understand the different types of mining and what kind of effects they would have. So there's a fair amount of technology development there. My prediction is that we will need a lot more work done before this is actually a useful and potentially rewarding type of mining. Uh, I think many of the companies that are going in will lose money and perhaps go bankrupt. I think the only ones that will make money in the short term are the ones that provide the technology that actually works. <laughs>